Hi, welcome back to I and I Studio. I want to give you a little demonstration on how to use the shellac on your panel to prepare it. Um, the first thing that I generally do is I lie the panel on a table. I don't really do this while it's on the wall. Another thing I do is I prop up the edge of the panel. I, I put a little stick underneath it or a few sticks so that it's elevated from the, the table. That way I'm not brushing the table when I'm trying to get the edge. So that's just a simple way to set yourself up. Shellac is a pretty easy product to use. It's cleaned up with ammonia and water. So I get the, the household ammonia in the, uh, you can get it in the grocery store, hardware store. And I mix it, I probably have 75% water and just put a little bit of the ammonia in it to clean the brushes. And they actually clean up quite nicely. I used this one yesterday and it's not stiff at all. So this is a Zinser shellac. <clears throat> I don't generally have to thin this. It comes pretty ready to go. I do stir it. And you can see the color change as you bring up, you know, the thicker part from the bottom and mix it with the thinner part on the top. The thing about this product is it dries very quickly. This is a large surface to paint. So the trick for me is how do I get the whole surface painted before it starts to dry and drag the brush? I also want to do the edges. It's pretty tricky. And I, I kind of roughly divide this big panel in quarters in my mind. So I, I'm not going to pre-wet my brush or anything. I just take a dry brush, dip it right in the can, and start floating the product on. You have to be pretty quick with this. I've got a pretty loaded brush, so it, it, it's a thin layer I'm putting on, but I'm not uh, being stingy with my material. If I don't want to drip the material over the top, I need to set the can over the a part that has not been shellacked. Because this is still dry, I'll just rest my can there for a while. This is the second coat on this board. And I'm gonna roughly do about a quarter of this. You want to go with the wood grain, if at all possible. Oops. Okay, I'm about at that quarter mark. Now I'm quickly going to do the edges because it has dripped and I don't want drips on my edges. It's a good idea to paint or varnish or seal your edges um, because if you get any paint on the edges, it's just much easier to remove. I tape my edges first and paint will bleed through the tape. Okay, so I've got the edge is taken care of, no drips. Gonna move on to my second quarter of the panel. Quickly. And if I choose to seal the back of the panel, I can do that as well. 
don't think I will, but a lot of people do. Okay, that's the second half. Let's get those edges really quick. This is not a finish. I don't have to go crazy. This is the underpainting. So I have a lot more leeway than if I were doing finishing coats. Because I'm uh, going to do a lot of painting and paper on the surface, this is mostly a functional coat, just so I'm protecting the wood. This dries quickly. I can put two coats on pretty quickly, within an hour, easily, if not 20 minutes, depending on the weather. So there are a lot of imperfections in this little uh, splashes and little dots of shellac here and there. Because I'm going to do a lot of collage and a lot of paint on this, it won't matter at all. However, if I want to smooth the surface, the beauty of the shellac is it sands perfectly, very easily. So I can give it a light sanding to get rid of any of the drips, splashes, imperfections that I want before I start to paint, okay? Let me show you a little bit about putting polymer medium on another surface. I'm going to do this panel with the polymer medium. I'm going to use the gloss. That's what I have. And a soft brush. You want to make sure, I don't like to use chip brushes when I'm uh, putting uh, undercoats or overcoats on because they tend to shed. These are inexpensive brushes but they don't shed. Um, I usually get these in a pack, about four of them for, you know, less than $10, varying size. This looks like a three inch, two or three inch. So again, I have put little sticks underneath the panel to elevate it from the table. And I make it real easy on myself. I usually just pour the medium directly on the surface and then brush it. This is a little more forgiving than the shellac. It uh, dries much slower, so I've got a little bit more time to get my thoughts together, really. I, the other one, I've got to really move. Again, that kind of floating motion, get it on, not too thick, but you know, generously. Your brush should be sliding. Just to go over, the reason we're doing this is to prevent moisture from getting into the surface of the panel. Uh, the thin plywood skins they use on the top can be porous and cause bubbles. I'm doing the sides. Now, in the long run, the way I treat my sides after the painting is done, I could leave them natural. I could leave them with the layer of um, medium on that I have on now. Um, what I've been doing lately is I've actually been sanding them and then I uh, cold wax, put a layer of cold wax. So that's a really beautiful surface. And get yourself some kind of a, a power sander. Don't try to do it by hand. Honestly, it'd take you forever. You don't want to put a whole lot of time into this process, especially when you're dealing with as many as I have to prep. Some of these I have two coats on, some one coat. Um, just depends on how substantial you put the coat on. I'm going to gesso them. I like to start with a white surface, and I will put a coat of gesso after this. It's not like 
the canvas where I have to really manipulate the surface by multiple coats of gesso and molding paste. Because it's a panel, that surface is going to be smooth anyway. So just as long as I can get a couple of good coats of gesso on, I'm good to go. You generally want to go with the grain of the wood. Sometimes just to get a spot or something, you can go the opposite direction and then kind of overbrush to correct it. I've got way too much medium here. It's pooling. I don't need that. And what I'll do is I'll use the excess to dip into it and get my sides. Get my sides painted. got plenty excess there. I've got tables on wheels. So I just roll it out so I can get to all sides. My brush is still gliding on the surface, meaning it's not dry yet and I have a substantial amount. Running a little thin on the on the uh, medium right here at the end. Let's see if I can get a little bit more from the top. There we go. Just enough to get us through. That's it. Okay. That's the difference between applying the gesso and applying the shellac. They both do the same thing. They're both going to be hidden under the painting. Doesn't really matter which one I'm doing. I'm just sort of demonstrating to you the options that we have, the good options we have. And um, I'm using pretty much what I have around the studio today because I have a little of this and a little of that. So I'll just use it up as best I can. By the way, the polymer medium cleans up with soap and water. Very easy. Remember, you know what I'm going to say. Painting is a practice. Practice makes perfect. Go to your studio.